In this session, we want to take a closer look at remote differential compression. We're going to double click on the replication group and we want to right click on the sending member and select properties. And we can see here that we have the option to use remote differential compression and it is selected by default. So we want to take a look at the circumstance in which we would need to disable remote differential compression. Now, when we use remote differential compression, we're compressing all data during edits, additions, insertions, etc. And when we compress that data, every time the data is compressed, we are using valuable processor time. If we send that data in its totality rather than the deltas, and the deltas would just be the changes that were made, then we would be saving valuable processor time. So it improves the replication. So under a circumstance like that, we might want to remove the tick and disable remote differential compression. You would recall that remote differential compression detects insertions, removals, and rearrangements of data in files, which enables that application to replicate only the changed portions of a file. And this was very useful when we're replicating files over a limited bandwidth network, such as a wide area network connection. If we want to save processor time, however, we can always disable remote differential compression, and that will save processor time, which in turn, would improve replication by sending their files in totality rather than just the changes to those files. On the properties of the sending member, we can also click on schedule and we are able to view the schedule that we have here or we can also create a custom schedule. We're going to click on OK to close this box. We also want to take a look at the staging folder. So we want to click on the membership tab and we want to right click on the replicated folder and select properties. Then we want to select staging by clicking here on staging. And we see here that we have the path, the storage path to the staging folder. You would recall that each replicated folder has its own staging folder, which by default was located under the local path of that replicated folder. We can see here that the staging folder has a default size of 4096 megabytes, but this is not a hard limit. It is only a quota that is used to govern cleanup and excessive usage based on how high and low the watermarks are, 90% and 60% of the stage and folder size respectively. For, ex for example, when the stage and folder reaches 90% of the configured quota, the oldest stage files are purged until the stage and folder reaches 60% of the configured quota. It is important to note that the stage and folder does not determine that quarter for the staging folder 
does not determine the largest file that can be replicated. In other words, it is possible to replicate a file that is larger than the configured quota of a staging folder. The large file is placed in the staging folder and the staging folder cleanup process is triggered when the file is finished staging and space usage is at or above the high watermark. And eventually, the large file will be purged from the staging folder. We can click on OK to close the properties of that staging folder. It is also possible to edit the replication group by actually right-clicking on the replication group and selecting Edit Replication Group. Uh, we can select the day and the time here we have selected Monday through Saturday, also Sunday. And then you can choose the bandwidth. We're going to select full for the bandwidth. And then we can look at the details that we had chosen. And we see the days stretching from Sunday to Saturday and the start time and the end time and the duration and the bandwidth. So when we are creating the replication group, we can set up the schedule then. We can also go to the properties of a particular connection and set up the schedule for replication. Or we can come to the replication group itself, right click and edit the replication from the property of the replication group. We just simply right click on replication group and say edit replication from the drop down menu. To recap, we took a look at remote differential compression. We also look at the staging folder and the replication schedule that we could set from right clicking on the replication group and clicking on edit replication group from the drop down menu. This is the end of our session and I want to thank you for listening.